Welcome to A Clinical Breath, respiratory insights from industry leaders. A Clinical Breath provides the community with the latest respiratory developments, trends, and expertise, all aimed at improving patient outcomes. Today's episode is brought to you by Monahan Medical Corporation. Monahan means it matters. This podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Opinions are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Monaghan Medical Corporation. Hello, and welcome to A Clinical Breath, respiratory care insights from industry leaders. Joining me now is Dr. Michael Bowman, and today we're going to talk about recognizing undiagnosed asthma. And uh, we've chatted before about that, and that's one of the biggest problems we have is that there are all the symptoms of asthma that we classically know, but yet somehow they get explained away. Why don't you go through some of the tests that you have heard or some of the challenges that you've faced? I think that that's a a major issue, and different youngsters take a different amount of time to get the diagnosis made correctly. And uh, as many, everybody knows, Kids with asthma can cough or they can wheeze uh, as their primary symptom. They may have shortness of breath that they don't even tell anybody. But um, it's been my experience that so many folks, whether it's uh, parents or teachers or grandparents or others, they think of wheezing as equal Mm -hmm. to asthma. Mm -hmm. So if a child happens to have wheezing as their symptom, somebody tumbles to the diagnosis probably a bit more quickly than if it's not. If it's cough, it can go on for a very long time with alternative explanations. I think that we see a lot of youngsters where it's been written off. The the family says, well, my doctor's always called it bronchitis Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. uh, allergies or sinus. We even had someone told their child had had sinus disease before they had sinuses in in their head. Um, so I think that, that what's presenting is an issue. I think families get used to what noises their child makes. Um, they will say, oh, that's just Jimmy's cough. And it's, uh, in fact, when you, when you delve into it, Jimmy's cough is an asthma cough that he has virtually every night. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully he's not sleeping with a dog. But uh, anyway, it winds up being a challenge to, to go beyond the common. I mean, asthma is an extremely common condition. It affects about 9 or 10%. I think that's a good point you raise is that the cough many times is not associated as an asthma symptom. Exactly. And I think we need to recognize, like you pointed out, is it? Inflammatory, so this is obviously an irritant of some type. Yes, very so, definitely. So coughing is something that people should be aware of, whether it be the teachers, whether it be the parents. And it's not a negative; it's a good positive sign because now we can get to the root of it. Exactly, and uh, a lot of parents, in our experience, have been thinking that oh, he just gets a lot of colds. Mm-hmm. And then when you delve a little more f- closely, it turns out every one of these colds lasts two to three weeks, and they take antibiotics, prednisone, and maybe albuterol to get over them. And you realize, no, this isn't just a cold. I mean, kids with asthma have colds, but uh, these are not just colds. It's actually a chronic illness. But because people realize that you don't do treatment in between colds, it's hard to realize that you do treat in between flares Mm -hmm. of asthma. Mm -hmm. So getting the idea across that this is a chronic condition, not just a series of colds that everybody gets. That's a major mind shift for a lot of folks. Do you see parents sometimes just saying, oh, it's just he's got allergies and he'll outgrow them. Yes. She'll outgrow them. Yes. That is exactly what a lot of folks think. It's a challenge in terms of trying to say, certainly it, it used to be that asthma was thought to be totally driven by allergies. I think people realize now that perhaps a majority of folks with asthma, allergies are are a major part of it. But um, exercise and viral illnesses and Mm -hmm. exposures such as exhaust pollution, cigarette smoke, a lot of things that are not allergic can be a major trigger. But it, it starts with someone thinking, 
this is just too much out of the normal. And one of the problems that uh, pediatricians and family medicine folks have is when you have 12 minutes or 17 minutes allotted mm -hmm. for each patient contact, mm -hmm. and you've got to go through how they're doing at school, their behavior issues, their mm -hmm. dietary issues, mm -hmm. their vaccinations, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's really hard to become a sleuth mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. asthma and subtle symptoms. Mm -hmm. So that winds up being just a, a challenge that mm -hmm. we continually have to harp on and raise the awareness for teachers to suggest to parents you might talk to the doctor about this, and then the teacher specifically asking the doctor or nurse, um, "What am I, could this be asthma? And uh, getting a little bit of an incentive to change the mindset uh, may lead in exactly the right direction. One of the uh, points that we discussed earlier is that children, believe it or not, spend a lot of their time in school uh, during the day away from their parents, but yet under adult supervision. Give us a list of some of the indicators that a teacher might be aware of that Johnny and Susie probably might have uh, an asthma problem or a breathing problem that they could share with the parent. I think that um, things, exercise tolerance is, is a major one. Frequently missing school, frequent absences mm -hmm. um, can be a, a major thing. And, and when other kids may be out of school for two days with a cold, the child with asthma may be out for a week or a week and a half. Mm -hmm. They may find that um, I've had youngsters where um, if, the, if they get around scents, a lot of people use body spray and hairspray mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And I've had patients where their cough whenever they get around their classmate who has a scent Mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. can be a, a sign that, oh, things are not going well. Mm -hmm. um, so probably exercise is the most common one and mm -hmm. having uh, the PE teacher or the coach or the athletic trainer tell the, the faculty member mm -hmm. who then tells the nurse, mm -hmm. I have some issues sure. or problems. But if unfortunately, if it's a cough or if it's Johnny's not motivated, it's misrepresented and all of yes. a sudden an opportunity is passed by. Yes, that happens. Mm -hmm. And that's why trying to get asthma raised as a, as a red flag for mm -hmm. uh, the staff to, to think of and to ask themselves, could this be asthma? That's important. You're very passionate about the fact that asthma under control is really not a problem. And I think we need to get away from the fact that asthma is a bad diagnosis. Some parents don't want to hear that Johnny or Susie has asthma. Yes, very But definitely. at the same time, control, their life will change drastically. Yes, very definitely. And I've had families say, well, um, of course he doesn't exercise. He's not a combative kid. He's not, not competitive. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like to mix it up. Well, he sits on the sideline because he can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know that other kids enjoy playing hard mm -hmm. every time he tries it. He doesn't know what it is, but he feels really crummy. Mm -hmm. And so that's something to get over. And, and um, certainly there are families where there's a family history uh, yes, of, exactly. of asthma or allergies. And so they hopefully have some insight of mm -hmm. could this be mm -hmm. such a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's not uncommon for an outside adult to raise the question, has anyone mm -hmm mention to you the possibility of asthma. Mm -hmm. And then doing that in a way that's not confrontational, but right. is helpful and so yes. forth. Sometimes you, we've talked earlier about the burden on the teachers today, especially with behavioral health issues. I would imagine that some of these undiagnosed asthmatic kids get pretty frustrated and start lashing out. Yes. And uh, all of a sudden now they're characterized as being troublemakers. Yes, exactly. And and they wind up, they don't know why they, they feel bad, but they feel very not good all mm -hmm. all the time or a lot of the time. And um, if they're not exercising, they may become obese mm -hmm. and then they may get bullied. And mm -hmm. so there are a lot of things that, that spiral mm -hmm. in the wrong direction for kids who mm -hmm. don't have their asthma under control. A lot of uh, parents allow their children, unfortunately, to spend too much time with the video games, sedentary <laughs> lifestyle. And that might also be a mask for the child not wanting to go out because they feel uncomfortable. Yes. So it's not just a distraction, but it's also an excuse. Yes, exactly. And again, kids, kids don't know why they don't like to do something 
uh, and um, they frequently will not tell their parent, um, oh, I couldn't run today. If the parent doesn't ask, no, sure. they, they don't volunteer it. Mm -hmm. They may even have forgotten it, which mm -hmm. is why the, the PE teacher or the coach or the trainer can tell the nurse, mm -hmm can then talk to the family and say, you know, this has happened a couple, three times. Mm -hmm. Has anyone mentioned this is an issue? You mentioned the asthma control test that you let children fill out along with their parents. Is there any room for that for someone who does not have asthma but yet might be a potential asthmatic, not yet diagnosed? And yes. then, of course, there's the stigma, but can we just kind of disguise it and just <laughs> see, see? Just take these test questions yes, for me. Yes, the, the asthma control test is a, is a standardized, proven test of um, five or seven questions for kids and parents related to symptoms they have had in the past mm -hmm. month mm -hmm. related to asthma. And for kids four to 11, it is, uh, there are um, four questions for the kids and three questions for the, the parent in terms of how much awakening, how much difficulty with mm -hmm. exercise, um, do they know they have asthma, that sort of thing. And then for folks who are um, 11 and over, it's just five questions that the patient answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, those could be given. I don't know how many uh, primary care providers ask so how, do, how does exercise go? How, how does he or she do at question. school? What, yeah. what are, how do they play? Mm -hmm. When do they play? Mm -hmm. What sports are they doing? Mm -hmm. Then you can kind of lead along depending on if they're out there playing Little League all the time mm -hmm. or youth soccer or whatever. That's, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, I have a child who I think has asthma. What's the test? Test it and tell me for sure. That, that is one of the major problems for parents believing that asthma is the, is the deal because they, there is no specific test for asthma. Mm -hmm. um, and so it requires convincing uh, by a caregiver who's hopefully experienced or a, a provider, prescriber, who can say, for these reasons, I think this mm -hmm. is what's going on and what we will do I frequently would do is say, let's start with some uh, rescue medicine and see if that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. If it does, then we'll, be, we'll know we're on the right track. Sure. And then we can go from there in terms of fine tuning. But the introduction of inhaled rescue medicine can be a major first step mm -hmm. to drawing the family into, oh, I guess you're right. He'd always come in after about 10 minutes of play. And when I gave that to him before, he's been out there 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. he's, it's the first time he's kept up with his cousin. So this is a collective effort. It's not just going to be one physician looking at a child and saying yes or no or one parent. It's a matter of getting a thorough history, getting an idea of what the child's activity level is, not just at home, but also outside the home yes. and in school and so forth. Exactly. And, and um, well, kids have a whole variety of different caretakers nowadays. So they may have a grandparent. They may have an after-school program. Um, they may be on a, a travel team of some sport. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of folks who can be uh, observing them and seeing, seeing how they're doing and seeing when things change. We have a lot of, uh, uh, or at least some, uh, folks, teens, when they go into high school and they go from grade school and middle school team practices after school mm -hmm. to more heavy-duty training and practices and games um, at five, six, or seven at night. And they may wind up having been a well-controlled patient with asthma as a middle schooler, and now it's just gone haywire. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that their medicine needs to be adjusted. Step up. Um, Step up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're doing workouts that they've never done before. It's mm -hmm. no longer recreational mm -hmm. sports. So that can be another advantage of the uh, folks saying, well, his asthma went away. He, he had it when he was four and five, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it went away, and now it's come back. Mm -hmm. And it may have been there all, in remission. all the time, oh, sure. but out, yeah, of, out sure. of activity. Yeah. And now when, when they've stepped up what they're doing or they've gone to an old school, I tell folks when from 13 on, whenever they go out with their friends, to take their rescue inhaler with them 
because they're, they're going to be friends who smoke. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that may tell them who their Maybe friends the trigger, are, sure. but that can be something that appears even in early teenage years. So to sum up then, the sooner the diagnosis can be made and the treatment plan put in place, the better for the child for the rest of their life, for all intents and purposes. I would hope so. I think it's hard to, to prove that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there are studies that suggest that if you have it under control, for two years and then stop the treatment, mm -hmm. it may you may start having symptoms mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. But I tell folks that when they're um, early in, in school and such, they need every benefit they can, and then we'll kind of play it by ear. Once they get used to what normal can be, mm -hmm. what their activity level and sure. sports level and everything can be, then they can go on. They'll recognize if things slide backwards. Great. Dr. Bowman, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Look forward to seeing you. you again. You've been watching A Clinical Breath, respiratory insights from industry leaders, brought to you by the Monaghan Medical Corporation. Monaghan means it matters. Thank you for watching, and tune in again for more respiratory-related topics.